If you've been following along in this particular series of videos, you know that we've been focusing on relationships. And again, to state the unequivocal truth, there is no more important relationship you have in life than the one you have with yourself. Because every other relationship you have in your life is just a mirror or reflection of the relationship you have with yourself. It's called the looking glass mirror universal theory. So today what we want to focus on is we want to focus on the relationship you have with your team members, the people that work with you in the trenches day in, day out on your business and help you, uh, you know, expand and accomplish your mission and your purpose in life as it is through your business. Now, we're going to cover five very important constructs that will help to harmonize and optimize the relationship you have with your team. So I hope that you have the time to stay along with me. Our very first one that we want you to focus on is to create an outcomes assessment for every role on the team. This is not the old fashioned world of job responsibilities, it's creating outcomes. People inherently want to do a great job, but most business owners, entrepreneurs are not good at telling people clearly and definitively how to be great at their job. What outcomes do they need to achieve in order to be great at the role? An outcomes assessment will do that so that people will then know exactly what outcomes they need to achieve. It's not necessarily a cookbook recipe for how to do the job, it's how to create the outcomes so they can bring their own personality, flair and charisma into the role. Once you've got your outcomes assessment, the second thing I want you to do to harmonize relationships in your business is I want you to train and never, ever, ever stop training. I don't care whether you got somebody who's been with you for 45 years, training never ends because of the second law of thermodynamics called entropy, which says that organized systems tend to go to their least organized state. Train, train, train. What do you train on? You train on your outcomes assessments and the outcomes you want to achieve and providing an operations manual to give you some clues for how to create the outcomes is a very wise step. You can literally uh, prioritize the outcomes assessments in terms of these are the things that need to be trained on in the first weeks, first months, and so on. It's a beautiful way to create a structure and a training manual in your office by having a, an outcomes assessment that you then prioritize. I would encourage you to create a training cycle, a training schedule where you can go in and say these are the days we're training, this is what we're training on. You have a copy, they have a copy, so then we can go on to the third piece, the third important part of harmonizing team relationships which is dealing with accountability. My mentor in this taught me that you can't have accountability if you don't have agreement. How do you have agreement about what outcomes they're going to achieve and how to be great at the role if you haven't provided the first thing we talked about, which is the outcomes assessment document. Now, microcosmic uh, abilities to hold people accountable are just on a day-by-day -day basis at the end of a shift. Go over with someone and course correct with your team members, care enough about them to course correct with them and point out the things where they've fallen short based upon the outcomes that you both agreed they could do. On a macrocosmic level, you've got weekly team meetings as well as quarterly reviews. Do not renege on doing quarterly performance reviews based upon the outcomes, all come in full circle here uh, in order to ensure that you're uh, in challenging and supporting your team to be the best version of them possible. Remember what I said, people inherently want to do a great job. Give them the tools, give them the feedback, give them the accountability to allow that to happen because then we move on to the fourth piece which is compensation. If you pay peanuts, you're going to attract monkeys. It's the oldest rule of entrepreneurship business. So you want to be compensating people fairly for the service that they provide and the value they bring to the company. It drives me crazy when I hear people say, yeah, we gave Bess a raise. And I said, why? I said, well, because you know, she's been here another year. Really? You're compensating people for being older? That's not wise. If they're adding more value to the company and creating more income and revenue as a result of their extra experience, that's a different conversation. Hourly is a very common way to, to compensate people. I think it's a terrible way to compensate people. It's maybe appropriate in the early stages of the relationship, but once they've passed probation and are into the main contract, why in God's name would you compensate someone for being slow and mediocre? Think about the psychology of <laughs> hourly wages. The slower and longer they take to do something, the more money they make. It's terrible psychology. Getting people to salaried situations once they've passed probation and have proven that they're worthy of being a team member and or moving to a percentage of revenue or percentage compensation models plus having bonuses and productivity sharing, those are things that are wise. The fifth and final one I want to talk about tonight is literally talking about gratitude. 
How often do you express gratitude to your team members for what they do, for showing up day by day and fighting with you in the trenches to accomplish your mission? I could tell you something, this was one of my weak spots, folks, in, in, in business, and it's something I continue to work at. I didn't hear it a lot as a kid. I didn't hear a lot that I was talented and fabulous and special and I could do anything I wanted. Um, again, I'm not crying the blues. It helped me be who I am. But as a result of not modeling that behavior, I, I didn't do it with my team. I literally had to write myself a note on the top of my uh, day sheets at the end of my Friday shift say, did I express appreciation to your team? Give them the gratitude and appreciation they deserve. If you haven't done uh, cost analysis to see how much money they make you every day, you need to be doing that little piece of business math. It's pretty simple. Just look at how much they cost you and how much more uh, revenue you can create as a result of them being there doing their job versus if you had to be there doing all of their job and your job, you'll find that they're making you a lot of money every day. In closing, the most important relationship you have is with yourself, but a very important relationship in order to have an amazing business that's in your ideal and authentic for you is with your team members. Harmonize, optimize these relationships by looking at the five steps that I've covered in this video. Creating outcomes assessments, training and never stop training, right? And then you want to create accountability so that you can have great compensation and then show your appreciation and gratitude. If you're a chiropractor and would like to see whether your team's firing on all cylinders, just click on the link below this video and we'll be happy to send you our CA questionnaire so that you can see whether in fact your team is in need of some more help in order to be better at what they do. Dr. Tom signing off, encouraging you, challenging you to be more so you can do more and have more of what your heart authentically desires.